Hello and welcome back to Hanksy Panksy, a podcast where two dumb idiot best friends fill themselves mind, body, and soul with a healing, hallucinating Tom Hanks. I'm Sam Siegel, and I'm one of those dumb idiots. I am your maze commander? Something like that. C- controller? Maze controller? I, I think, think it is maze controller. Or I think, yeah. is it maze comptroller? It's maze. I'm your maze controller. I am. I got my <laughs> fingers all up in your accounts. Mm-hmm. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, yeah. You know, if you want to talk about 401k distributions, mm-hmm. uh, I'm your guy. Y- yeah, you're the man. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, this is this. Uh, this feels. Can I say? Yeah. Good. It feels extremely good. Oh, it feels good. It is. I will say weird to be on video Mm. when we're talking about tom yeah yeah that's Uh, fair because the video new one we didn't even do video for Dwayne. we did not we didn't even do video for like a good chunk of keanu no the video is seeing us in a three-dimensional space instead of just hearing us in uh luscious spatial audio Mm -hmm. courtesy of my editing uh which is not very good (laughs) (laughs) um yeah, it's it's kind of a treat. So, uh, yeah. folks, if, if you weren't aware, we do post stuff on YouTube. If you want to mm-hmm. look at our ugly mugs, um, yeah, you're welcome and if, to. And if you're ever wondering, hey, wh- why can't I find the video uh, at the same time that the audio posts on Wednesday? It's because I forget that it's unlisted. <laughs> um, for, for and and the uh, patrons, uh, hankspanksy.com slash patreon um get Patreon, access Patreon. to patreon.com slash hanksy panksy whatever the fuck yeah um and uh <clears throat> so the patrons get access to it a day early and so the yeah. way i do that is i leave it unlisted and give them the link um and then invariably i either get uh, uh i forget or i just get too lazy to do it on my phone because it's kind of annoying to do it on my phone yeah uh so sometimes i don't remember to do that until after dinner yeah it's it's inconsistent but what you get mm-hmm. is high quality high i bought a high definition webcam per your request sam so that uh-huh. we can uh stream only the most luscious of content straight to the youtubes yeah you get you get high quality stuff you get a lot of good visual gags mm-hmm. um hey you know that's what we're known for yeah, our slapstick. You get to see it when I moon the camera mm-hmm. uh, in response to a bad Keanu Reeves movie. Yes, you get to see occasionally uh, my cat lick herself just just right over. Can I get my f- here? You you had it at first. You knocked it out in one. Well, she's really just in this like bottom corner here. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So she was just there a minute ago. Um, so you get to see fun stuff like that. Yeah. See, um, that gag worked best on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Le- I mean, last year, you would have seen Luke's giant pile of books, which I believe are now on the shelf just over his shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Uh-huh. Uh, they've been sorted. They've been cataloged. The giant pile of Dickens is over there. Uh, Sam, I was going to do this a bit later. Mm-hmm. But while we're talking about streaming, can I talk about my neighbors? Yeah, is are these the the people who moved into the the house the, the for lack of a better term a little shabby looking? Yeah, like right next to us. Uh huh. Yeah. So here's the deal with this house. Mm-hmm. We have a theory about what's going on over there, okay. but the theory requires a little explanation, and then I want to see what you think because mm-hmm. you may arrive at the exact same theory. But the the house next to us, we have no idea who lives there. And I don't think they listen to this podcast or know who I am. So I think we're good. You better hope. Um, We have no idea who lives there because it's an endless rotation of cars. Huh? Multiple cars. So not just two. We're talking like four, five vehicles. Yeah. When I've passed by, I've noticed uh, a lot of cars. A lot of vehicles with out-of-state plates. With some in-state with like local college mm-hmm. stickers and stuff. Yeah. And, and 
sometimes they'll park like in front of your house in front of my house there's a car in front of my house right now is it that silver silver honda it is still the silver honda okay yeah yeah and that's the other thing sometimes there's a big get together on weekends i don't Mm -hmm. see any of these people but i assume they're getting together weekends sometimes it's the middle of the like week Mm -hmm. and there will be six six vehicles next door yeah um Sometimes there's dogs, but never the same dogs. Inter- okay, I have a theory, but I, I want to know what yours is. I have a theory as well. So I would I'm dying to hear yours and because I have a sneaking suspicion they're the same, but Okay. I think this is an orgy house. This is an orgy house. Okay, yeah. This is yeah. this is uh just someone purchased it and rents it out for orgies. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Cause well, ours is think we think not only is it an orgy house, mm-hmm. but this is why I bring it up because we're talking about streaming. We think it's an OnlyFans house. Ooh. So, and no judgments, but yeah. we think these people are making premium adult content. Interesting. I it hadn't is... considered the OnlyFans <laughs> angle. The weird thing, it's the only explanation. I can't think of another reason why. It Six is. to eight people would congregate in a house, but never quite the same people. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can you, what are the odds that there are two content creators just yeah. next door to each other doing basically the same thing? If you think about it. I mean, we are showing our ass regularly mm-hmm. on this podcast mm-hmm. in a metaphorical sense, and they're just doing it literally. Yeah. I mean, in, who, who's who's to stop you from jerking off to our voices yeah that's, that's true if that's what you if that if that's what gets you going <laughs> yeah um i can i say mm-hmm. i hadn't considered that anyone would ever want to beat off to to this show yeah dude that's a new revelation for me <laughs> yeah i i don't know how i feel i don't know if i, I feel don't... good about it yeah that's some new information yeah that is different that is Cause, different because my it? neighbors my neighbors explicitly make content for that purpose yeah now yeah, we that do is, that is beat off content yeah we do goofs which is not yeah. typically beat off content it's like an orgasm for your laugh laugh box factory yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay let's do this Mm-hmm. Let's take a, a a page out of their book. Uh huh. And for ten seconds, let's give the people at home what they want. Let's give them a little sultry, okay, little sultry okay. voice yeah. action. Because you and I, we got, we got good voices. Sure. I think. Yeah. I you know I I like to think so. Um. Yeah. Yeah. We we can we can give this a shot. Let me just. Uh... <clears throat> hey, yeah. Why don't you just come for me, baby? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it comes so hard for me right now. Hey, Mom, I let me whisper in your ear. Is that, is that, is that anything? <laughs> I'm digging the ASMR direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm putting my mouth on the microphone, so the audio is terrible. Yeah. It's so bad. I noticed. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you like it when I spend your money? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you like it when I spend all your fucking dollars? <laughs> Else, baby. <laughs> I was gonna take this seriously and actually deliver what I promised, but that's oh, fucking good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, if, if you want to look, we can get horny on Maine. I just like the Venn diagram of people that beat off to our podcast, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then the other circle is people who are into financial domination. Yeah, it's it's one guy. It's one person, but we just made that person extremely happy yeah yeah um yeah. anyway do my, do my parents still listen to this <laughs> i hope not yeah fuck it do too <laughs> probably not after this probably not probably not after this um let me see so uh, obviously uh, we watched 1982's mazes and monsters yeah th- so talk you can get off our backs about it. Mm-hmm. We did. And to be fair, now that it's available on all these fucking streaming platforms, 
It was worth it. Dude's in it. He's in it. He's, he's in it. He's big lot. time in this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So some might say that he's the first credited actor in the movie. Some might say it, and it might even be true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was 26 when he did this. I was wondering how old he was. 20 fucking six. Here's what's nuts about Tom Hanks, because at that point in his life, I want to say he was married with kids. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So for him, this was a day at the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Now, remind me really quick. Is this pre or post bosom buddies? Wish you hadn't asked that. I think it's post bosom buddies. I think it's post bosom buddies. Yeah. I think this is a a bosom buddies (laughs) uh, Tom Hanks. Yeah, the often forgotten and well, yeah, that's a good choice. If you've forgotten about Bosom Buddies, it mm-hmm. was the pretty pretty dated mm-hmm. uh, sitcom that he did, uh, and that's an upset about Bosom Buddies, I guess. I think it is. Yeah, Luke, how is your watch, uh, Mazes and Monsters? Bog standard, nothing huge, watched it on Peacock. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I know that's not an original joke, but I do really wish they would merge with Max so that mm. we could get Max cock. Well, they are, uh, there have been talks about them merging with Paramount Plus, which would get us Paracock. Paracock is pretty good. Pretty good. Paracock. Or, uh, other people have said Cock Mount, and that's good too. Cock Mount may be better, even. I, I am partial to Paracock. Paracock is a thinker, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, that one's versus Mount Cock uh, or Cock Mount, Cock either Mount. or. Yeah, yeah. The, see, the thing, the good thing about Paracock is that, you know, it's also something that you can say to, like, a question that your guest asks, like, oh, what, what is in your vase over there? Paracock. That's a Paracock. Mm-hmm. That's Paracock, baby. Yeah, just Paracock, right there. Yeah, cut them. <laughs> harvested them myself. <laughs> Organic, uh, no GMOs. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, my watch was fine. Nothing to report. Watched it this morning on Peacock. Um, yeah, I was. This is where I was going to talk about my neighbors, but we already did that. So mm-hmm. just shout out to my neighbors who are yeah boning for profit and yeah. doing apparently pretty well at it. Getting wet, getting wild. Getting, getting fucked and getting, getting paid, paid. Yeah. getting paid yeah uh sam how was your watch my watch was uh pretty good so um uh, booted up on the old peacock uh yesterday mm-hmm. uh and then watched about 45 minutes then had to go to dinner went to dinner had a nice dinner came home <laughs> finished it um that that was pretty much it. You see, you got all excited because I messaged yeah. you that I was starting it, and then like three hours later, I was like, "And I'm done." Yeah, you sent me a message at like I want to say like three p.m. Yeah, about three thirty. Three thirty, and said, "Hey, I'm I'm in the flick." So not only was it like it wasn't a I'm starting it, it was I'm in it. Yeah, you were neck deep in it, in the Hanks, mm-hmm. and then uh, yeah, at like eight thirty, mm-hmm. <laughs> I got the message. So I was hoping there was. You know, more of a story there. No, no, really, just a just a dinner, uh, yeah. in there. Um, that that was that was pretty fine. So, um, you know, it, n- nothing too wet or wild with that watch. Um, yeah. So, you know, typically, this is the time where. Okay. <laughs> Sam's video has... Oh! Hello, Luke! Oh, no. You thought you were rid of me, but it is I, the (laughs) breakfast wizard! God damn it! So, I have a fucking bone to pick with you. Breakfast wizard, what are you wearing? This is the hat that I have always worn. You've just never seen it. It appears to have tiny dragons on it. Is it perhaps a burp cloth that Sam keeps on the side of his desk that now that I think of it, the, his son did vomit into recently? Mm. It is. 
I mean, that's pretty de rigueur for Sam these days, I feel like. just Well, that's sort of his deal, but I'm a fucking bone to pick with you. Okay, yeah, lay it on me, man. You son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. You said that you don't eat breakfast. Yeah. And yet... This morning, I this did morning send Sam a message. This morning at 10.30, what the fuck? <laughs> you say you're eating breakfast, what is this? So here's the thing, Breakfast Wizard. Mm-hmm. You've been gone. No, I've been traveling. <laughs> okay, getting them airline points, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, you've got to be like a Sky Miles like diamond member. Or oh, whatever. gold elite status for sure. Yeah. So anyway, here's the deal. You've been gone or traveling. You haven't been in communication, so I haven't had the opportunity to tell you. Mm-hmm. Um. Something has happened to me. Oh. Which is that I'm hungry when I wake up. Yes, yes, yes. That's how breakfast works. Yeah. This is new. This is not a normal thing for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm very confused by this because I feed myself at night. Uh-huh. I eat kind of a lot because I guess I'm hungry these days. And then I go mm-hmm. to sleep and I wake up and I have to do it again. Yeah, that is what most people do in my experience. Yeah, so I don't have a go-to because I've spent decades not eating breakfast. Yes, shaming me in the process. Yeah, so I've not been attending, you know, your services. I haven't been sort of part of your congregation. And now now that I am, I don't I, it, it's the wild fucking west out here. So what have you have you been enjoying? So I have been playing in the cereal circus a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I've it, with the celiac that I can't eat like cinnamon toast crunch. Right. You could just kind of have a bowl of nuts that you splash some milk on. Yeah, so I've tried the granola, which Ugh. I gotta tell you, there's nothing good. Like it's it's a pretty brutal experience to wake up make coffee, and then shovel a bunch of loose granola with oat milk into your face. It's basically crushed up leaves. Yeah, it's rough. So I stopped doing that, experimented with oatmeal, Mm. which is a step above granola, but for me, it's still a pretty, like, it's a grueling way to get the day going. It's a mush, for sure. Yeah, it's a mush. Uh, So Reese's Puffs, um i think are, that's what they're called are they gluten-free they are gluten-free yeah it's it's rice oh, and corn i guess but a delicious cereal to be sure yeah so i've been doing that but lately mm-hmm. i've been eating eggiches now are you familiar with eggiches what in the flying fuck is that <laughs> i'm surprised breakfast wizard but, well, you. you know, I'm not. Look, I've I've been on the road in a different dimension. I've been in the pancake place. Yeah, which and is the so place. I, I'm not on the cutting edge of breakfast technology these days. Yeah, I can't get a visa at the pancake place. Those uh, no, no, your kind typically can't. No, they won't let me in. Um, an eggage is a frozen delicacy that you can purchase at Target and. Kroger, I think, has it as well, or whatever mm-hmm. your local. What about Walmart? Probably. I I I wouldn't know. Aldi? <laughs> if it ever fucking opens. <laughs> uh yeah, probably. Um, but Sam, an egg is exactly what it sounds like. It is egg, sausage, and then twist, egg again. Gross. Yeah, it's it's gluten free and keto, which is not something I adhere to, but it is typically gluten free. So I kind of look for that. It's also an affront to God. But it is protein. It is an affront to God, but it is also protein. Those but two at kind what of cost. <laughs> Have you ever noticed, Breakfast Wizard, that affronts to God and protein sometimes go together kind of a lot? Oh, yeah. No, the the big man, he doesn't like the protein. He was a big carb hog, if you know what I mean. Yeah, because I'm just thinking about the turducken. Mm-hmm. 
or that wild time when KFC, I think it was KFC. Well, the made, double down. The double down made chicken sandwiches, which you'd think would be bread and chicken, but no, was chicken, other shit, and chicken. Correct. It, they also do the chitza. Now, what is a chitza breakfast? Uh, chitza or chizza, as they say in some parts of the world. Yeah. Is of course a pizza made on top of a fried chicken. Oh, there's God, no God there. No, God has cursed the the terrible folks at KFC. Yeah, they they wander through a protein wasteland over he, there. He calls them Kentucky's forgotten children. <laughs> Anyway, so that's where I'm at, Breakfast Wizard. I've been experimenting with breakfast. I mm. still don't commit to it some days, but like today. Terrible. Yeah, if I if I need to podcast, you need fuel to podcast. Oh, yes, I hear that it's strenuous work, not like doing OnlyFans. Yeah, now, hey, now that you pointed out, those people are working hard over there. Oh, they work up a sweat, let me tell you. Oh, look at Kitty Cat. There's a kitty cat, Breakfast Wizard. I th I think I scared her when uh, when I uh, possessed Sam's body. Yeah, it, the voice is it's good, Breakfast mm -hmm. Wizard. Um, <laughs> that's all I got for you, though. Mm, okay. Uh, well, I since I have assumed Sam's body, I can tell you a little update for him. Oh, yeah. What's Sam got going on these days? He has started eating raisin bran. Go ahead and put him in a fucking home. He's done. <sighs> That's hard to hear, Breakfast Wizard. Mm -hmm. Do you I think mean, it's... he still has the sugar cereals, of which I am so proud. Mm -hmm. But he does do the raisin bran. It's his second day, and I think he should just be put down now. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have questions. Mm-hmm. Was this is this related at all to the newly acquired dad status? I don't think so. I think it was an effort to find something healthier to eat. But as you know what I say, once you go brand, I no longer stand. Because <laughs> that was my follow up was, is this a regularity thing? Oh, no, Sam. Look, you know how Sam has talked about fiber before. Mm hmm So, you know, you know that guy's punctual as can be. Yeah, it's super punctual. Um, you can set your clock to his bells. And Sam has also expressed, as you well know, Breakfast Wizard, the idea that you shouldn't eat too much during the day so that you don't have to take a return trip to the bathroom. Correct, yes. You should only go the one time in the morning <laughs> in before the you shower. shower. That's just a normal thing that everyone should do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, interesting. I'm mm -hmm. a little worried about our boy Sam. Oh, you should be. He's circling the drain. Yeah, a little early, I would say. Oh, yeah. He's raging so rapidly. Yeah, but hey, that A A A R P membership is gonna be pretty sick when we Oh, go it'll see come movies. in handy at the old IHOP, let me tell you. That and when we go see movies for this podcast, he can get us a sick ass Ooh, discount. You're right, you're right. We're talking matinees for like two bucks. Oh shit. Yeah. That's pretty good. In this well, economy. I know, but I I should probably get back to the pancake portal. Yeah. Uh, but before I do, I understand that you are doing something a little special for your uh, for your listeners. And so to your listeners, I should say, put that nice syrup on your genitals and rub away. Oh, yeah. Oh, See? Get, get it every nook and cranny and just, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, do what you need to do with your dirty self and then eat some breakfast, tatty bye. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck happened well the breakfast wizard showed up oh jesus why, why am i so sticky with syrup 
Yeah, well, because a little bit of syrup play got involved. Huh. Um, was it, hey, was it sexy? Yeah, I think so. I think nice. for that for the other person, not the person earlier, but the other person with the Venn diagram of food play mm-hmm. who beats off to our podcast. Mm. Um, nice. They're they're extremely happy right now. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. You want to do the uh, plot of mazes and monsters? Yeah, if I can summon it from my brain, because to be honest, this one kind of fell out the minute it was done, but I got you covered. Thank you. Because this is Luke Patrick's 3X structure or your money back oh, guarantee. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. It's back. It's hard because this movie kind of only has two acts, but we're going to sh- mm-hmm. <laughs> we're gonna call a section of it the third act. Sure. So the first act of uh, Mazes and Monsters, we're introduced to a cadre. Cadre? Cadre. Uh, uh, cadre. Cadre. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're introduced to a cadre of college students Mm-hmm. Uh, of which Tom Hanks is one. The T T T H, the time two Tom Hanks on this one, pretty short, sure. is like uh, fifteen minutes. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it's it, we've seen worse. Uh, so before that, we're introduced to a couple characters. This guy who wears funny hats all the time. J J J J. There's his uh, good-looking blonde friend. Daniel. Daniel. And then there's the gal in this movie. Kate. Kate, thank God, because I couldn't remember her name and that's not going to be a great look. Yeah. Then we're introduced to Tom Hanks, who was kicked out of Tufts, which... Mm -hmm. Oof. Ooh. (laughs) Uh, And they're now going to... Shit, what's the college? Oh, shit, they named it? Yeah, Grant or something? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, they're going to a new school. The other three people have previously played together Mazes mm-hmm. and Monsters, which if you're detecting a similarity in name to Dungeons and Dragons, yeah, they're identical. Uh, this is a great value brand. Yes. Dungeons and Dragons. This is that Costco Kirkland Select version mm-hmm. of, of Dungeons and Dragons, Mazes and Monsters. Apparently, and we're going to get into this, uh, we're introduced in the first act to the idea that Tom Hanks' character had to flunk out of college because he wouldn't stop playing Mazes and Monsters. Correct. So now he's at a new school and his shithead parents, all of them have terrible parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, his dad is like, you gotta, you gotta buckle the fuck up and stop playing this game. No games. Yeah, and his mom was like, I'll have another alcohol, please. Yeah, yes, please. She's a raging alcoholic. Something we don't do anything with in this movie. No, it comes up <laughs> at the beginning where it's just like, you're a lush, you bitch. <laughs> Basically. And then, and then we like never see her again. Don't talk about it. Don't do a thing with it. Um <clears throat> Yeah, she's gone. Thanks, character actress, for showing up <laughs> briefly. <laughs> um, so guess what? In the first act, towards the end, he joins up with the crew and they start playing Mazes and Monsters. Big surprise. Mm-hmm. He also immediately meets the gal, Kate, and says the really creepy line. He like can't talk. And she's like, what's up? And he's like, oh, you're really beautiful. And she says thanks nailed it nailed it um, <laughs> got it in one got it in one and then they kind of start a romance based on that yeah come on kate it's pretty hot and heavy it's pretty hot and heavy stuff um at one point two. they are talking about moving together into his dorm room which i don't think is a thing it can't no one no one wants to be an extra in a dorm room. Yeah. Their dorm rooms are sick, though. They're very nice. It's a single, which is, like, unheard of. It's a single with an ensuite. Mm-hmm. Which is... Nuts. I've never seen that. And Particularly I, yeah. for, like, 1982. Because, yeah. like, now dorm rooms, I think, are a lot nicer so that people will come and uh, feel justified in spending the hundreds of thousands of dollars that they're spending Absolutely. on a college education. Um, 
but back in 1982 they were basically pow camps yeah <laughs> where you <laughs> learned if you're there on the gi bill you're gonna feel right at home mm-hmm. um, yeah yeah nothing no big changes um act two the kid with the hats jj um jj trigger warning decides to go uh take his own life in these caverns that are nearby with i i need to say he talks about killing himself with the same amount of passion i talk about going to kroger yeah it's just this like well guess i'll kill myself i guess that's on my list today it's a very like flash like it it's foreshadowing for a man called Otto. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I've been calling it in Mansum Heterova for so long that mm-hmm. I forgot the English name of that movie. Very nice. <laughs> um yeah, anyway, he's pretty he's pretty dispassionate about it, but mm-hmm. he goes to these caverns and then I guess is overwhelmed by the possibilities and says, No, no, no. Instead, we're gonna LARP down here. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh tanks the D D game so that they can go larp in the caves i'm sorry i just i was gonna kill myself but <laughs> <laughs> i found out we could go larping instead <laughs> <laughs> it's i wish i were making it up <laughs> oh god yeah so they start LARPing hard. Mm-hmm. Um, the romance continues. And then, Sam, this is why the movie is hard to break into three acts. It takes a very hard left turn. Yeah. In that Tom Hanks's character has a full psychotic break mm-hmm. and becomes his character. Uh, yes, Pardue. Pardue. Which, he, yeah. in, in a joke for myself <laughs> and our French listener... I kept calling hein, Pardieu. Uh <laughs> which is is just a play on pain perdu, uh, yeah. which is French toast. This is a joke for no one. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> so pain pardu. <laughs> um as uh, Tom Hanks becomes pain pardu. Mm-hmm. And then uh he just sort of loses it towards the end of act two. I would um, say his dis- descent into psychosis is pretty rapid. Oh, it's immediate. In that he sees um uh a sea minotaur? Yeah. In the caves, stabs it and then he's convinced he's Pampardu. Yeah. And and that he just is Pampardu now. Uh yeah. he is he is a celibate healer. Yeah. Level um, nine. Level nine. Very yeah, important. Le- level nine celibate healer. So he like breaks it off with uh Kate. Yeah. And she's kind of rightfully like, so you won't fuck me anymore? <laughs> and he's like, No, I'm Pam Pardu. Yeah. I'm a celibate healer. I'm a celibate healer. Those and days he, are behind me. And then he says the bone chilling line. Uh I still love you. And I can love you without making love to you. Yeah. And just... (laughs) So that descent is kind of the rest of Act 2. It doesn't really fit into three acts as a structure, but let's just say the third act is he goes to New York Mm -hmm. um, and his friends are trying to find him. Uh, The cops get involved. Um. And then he does some buck wild stuff in New York. My favorite is when he wigs out a presumed paranoid schizophrenic that's living in the streets Mm -hmm. in this like subterranean part of New York City. He runs into him and the guy's like, hey, what's up? And he's like, how long have you been in the mazes? And the guy's like, okay, weird way to put that. But like years, Mm -hmm. I can't find (laughs) another place. And then he goes, Tom Hanks says like, can you tell me more about the dragon (laughs) and the guy's face is like wow i'm out of it like i'm off my rocker but this shit yeah (laughs) he he definitely has the the reaction of like man i thought i was crazy (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm gonna go get a job at Burger King. But holy shit, this guy's out of his fucking gourd. <laughs> yeah. Um, he stabs a mugger. He mm-hmm. like some people try to mug him. Uh huh. And so he stabs a mugger that he thinks is a monster. Mm-hmm. Um, and I forget how they find him. Oh no, they. No, what am I doing? Because they find him on top of. Hmm. The Twin Towers. Yeah, um, yeah. A mere 19 years before the towers fell. Yeah, a mere almost 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, where he, he thinks he's going to fly and ascend to the Great Hall if he yes. leaps off of this thing and they talk him down. The movie ends, folks, <laughs> with him back at his parents' house, mm-hmm. the, which he calls The Inn. Uh-huh. Uh, and this friends show up and they're like, Robbie, so good to see you. And he goes, Galaflax or whatever. It's uh-huh. nice to see you. <laughs> I thought you were dead. You must have been revived by a greater healer than I. And mm-hmm. their faces are great because they go like, shit. <laughs> his, to preface, his mom is like, oh, he's doing a lot better. Yeah. No, and he's not. <laughs> and they're like, okay, cool. And then they go see him, and he's like, Glacia, hello, I'm the great Pan Pardu. And it's like, fuck, man, he's not better at all. <laughs> he's He looks better. He's got on these very 80s shorts. <laughs> um, he looks stylish, but then they just spend the afternoon LARPing. And then the way she kind of says it at the end, because she says, like, we played the game one last time it sounds like they never go see him again it's unclear at (laughs) best (laughs) hey what about your friend robbie who went through it Mm -hmm. oh yeah fuck that guy yeah we played D &D with him one more time and then and then uh, you know what are you gonna do exactly like i look i can't be responsible for him yeah and then this made for tv movie ends yep yeah uh i forget do we have any rules around what we think about it no we can just say whatever but yeah, first so... luke it's time for loan leave or oh, love you, you caught me off guard with it this i week. did because i forgot about it also um, i like the structure because now we're gonna edge people on what we think of this yeah it's pretty good yeah uh so, so... of course <laughs> loan leave or love is the game show within the podcast uh within the sex show within the podcast um in which uh, the, during my parental leave, I wa- I started 51 movies that yeah. I either watched alone, I dipped out of, or I watched with the love of my life, my wife, my wife. Um, my wife. Luke, I will give you three uh, movies, and uh-huh. you have to tell me which one I watched alone, which one I left, and which one I watched with my wife. Yeah. So, here we go. Mm-hmm. Um, Greyhound, mm-hmm. Drumline, oh, or Cowboys versus Aliens. Okay, so I've seen all three of these. Okay, this is this is like buying orange juice, mm-hmm. a hot dog, or like a pack of hot dogs and. A distressing number of condoms mm-hmm. at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. You're presenting a picture to the person checking yeah. you out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's genuinely confusing. Yes. Um, okay, Greyhound being the Tom Hanks movie. Yes, the Tom Hanks movie. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You did like Greyhound. Actually, I didn't, if you'll remember. I was oh. a little disappointed by it. Yeah, but now that you're a dad... That that movie, dad movie. Who's to say? Yeah, who's to say? Okay, I think you dipped out of Greyhound again. Okay, I think you gave it another shot because you thought I'm a newly minted dad. I got my dad card and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm eating raisin bran. Uh, I'm gonna check out Greyhound again. Mm-hmm. Apple original Greyhound. Um, and Drumline. I think you watched with your wife mm-hmm. 
uh drumline if i remember it's actually a pretty good movie oh yeah it's a <clears throat> it's a classic nick cannon film in which um <laughs> he he does at one point say that he's not gonna go around and have a bunch of kids with a bunch of different people which has aged pretty poorly <laughs> pretty poorly <laughs> so i think you watched drumline together Mm -hmm. uh because i think i actually saw that movie with you guys a very long time ago it's not unlikely so i think i think possibly at your wife's house okay i think we gathered as teens to watch that movie Mm -hmm. um i forget when it came out exactly but anyway uh and then what was the last one cowboys versus aliens okay that movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the only category that's left is alone, which is a distressing image. <laughs> okay, I'm going to flip these. I think okay. you tried to watch Cowboys versus Aliens with your wife mm-hmm. and then did watch Drumline by yourself because otherwise I cannot stomach the idea of you sitting by yourself and thinking, you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna watch Cowboys versus Aliens. Uh, okay, so so uh, dip, left Greyhound. Yeah. Love Cowboys versus Aliens. Yeah. Lone Drumline. Yeah, I think so. Is that your final answer? I I think it's wrong, but yeah, I'm gonna lock it in. Yeah, you're dead fucking wrong. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, I watched Greyhound by myself. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I got pretty bored and I uh, was on my phone for most of it, but I did watch all of it, Luke. Nice. Um, kind of just will... a repeat of your previous experience <laughs> with Greyhound. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> um, uh, we watched Drumline together. Okay, so I, I should have stuck to my guns. And uh, we dipped out of Cowboys versus Aliens because you're correct. It sucks shit. <laughs> that movie sucks shit. <laughs> we made it 45 minutes and dipped yeah that one's that one's rough it's not great and you would think they would be better with daniel craig and harrison ford but no it's not very good at all no i don't know what contract bullshit they got sucked into oh, to i have do to make not that know. movie or what's fat how much would you have to pay them to show up for that a couple million at least oh i'm thinking like 20 million bucks probably yeah, that'd, that'd get me to show up for work that day. Maybe like a couple million a day. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, look, you take as long as you need to to film this, but you are paying me two million dollars per day. Yeah. That seems not fair. per not per day that I'm filming. Per day <laughs> I'm in a trailer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would suck shit. So I hate to hear that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. but at the same time i'm very glad you didn't watch that movie by yourself that would be grim that That would would be be, that'd be really brutal almost as grim luke as mazes and monsters what'd you think this movie's 80s as hell man Uh, fucking is (laughs) because here's the deal with this movie since i can kind of expound upon things here um this is a propaganda movie. This is a mm-hmm. moral panic propaganda movie about Dungeons and Dragons. That is literally what the book is. It's like it was made because some kid uh, took his own life and the parents blamed D&D. Yeah, and it was like poorly reported on. Yeah. And so the uh, woman who wrote Mazes and Monsters wrote it in a day. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yep, it sh- <laughs> it shows. Yeah. Um. So she wrote it in a day about this like fucking moral panic that everyone had about D and D, and it making people uh, fucking kill themselves. Yeah, devil worshiping mm-hmm. people with suicidal tendencies. Um. It's bananas. What did you think of it? It is hokey as all hell. It's um, very hokey. It like it, you can feel in your bones that this is like a made for TV movie. Down to the fact that there are fades. Like mm-hmm. I think they're in <laughs> for the commercials. Caverns. Yeah, they're in the caverns at one point. And Kate says something. 
and it's like oh there's gonna be a commercial break it fades and then it fades back immediately where it left off yes like, yeah that would have been a pepsi clear ad or a crystal mm-hmm. pepsi ad right there absolutely um, but can i say mm-hmm. the the earth that that this movie is planted on Mm-hmm. The the loam, yeah, in in which this is planted, is fertile ground for the conspiracy corner. Uh, we're, we're not talking about that. Oh, okay. I'm just talking about everything else because we like our introduction to this is a like in media res. It's the police showing up to uh, these caves and yeah. they're like, "Yeah, kid's dead in here" or something. <laughs> And he's yeah. like briefing a reporter and he's like, yeah, he played mazes and monsters. And he's like, yeah, these kids, they have their problems. And so they work them out while they play mazes and monsters. And it's like, yeah, that is true. I definitely use D&D to work out my problems, which is why all my D&D characters um, spend all their time worrying about vomiting. <laughs> it really slows the game down when every time I'm like, I want to touch this, but is it clean? Yeah. Yeah, I want to hack this goblin in half, but, but can I put on a hazmat suit yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, hold on, I gotta, I gotta take a shower after this battle. Yeah, so I want to talk about that, but I also just want to get it out of the way really quick that uh, you and I both are TTRPG enthusiasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've been known to play some mazes and monsters. Mm-hmm. Uh, you more recently than me. Um, mm-hmm. You're actively in the shit on that one. Uh, I'm, um, I'm parental leave, but yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're we're fans of the the genre, mm-hmm. um, which makes this movie weird because they keep showcasing things. Like, okay, there's a scene where a uh, blonde dude and hat guy. I know their names. I'm just mm-hmm. I like the descriptors better. Sure. Uh, Hitler Youth guy <laughs> and the hat dude mm-hmm. um, are painting miniatures, and I think the movie is trying to say, "Look at these losers." Uh-huh. But I view this, and I'm just like, "Yeah, they look like they're having a chill ass afternoon yeah. painting their miniatures." What, what a nice hobby! Yeah, or like they'll be playing, and it's like candle lit, which is the amount of effort these people put into playing fucking D and D. To an extent, because <clears throat> there's a lot of like scene setting. Yeah. Where like they light a thousand fucking candles. Yeah. But the gameplay seems very dull. Which was 80s DD. Like, uh. Yeah, but Freilich didn't even roll to die. Yeah, that's true. He just beefed it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, the kids in Stranger Things seem to be having more fun actually yeah. playing D and D. Yeah, it, for these people, it seems like a fucking job. Yeah, they're clocking in. Uh, but I think that's the problem: is that this movie has such a tenuous grasp on what D and D is mm-hmm. that when it came to actually showing them playing the game, they're like, I don't know. Uh, put a lot of candles in there and like a map, I guess. Yeah, I guess they need a map and some characters. Or, like, there's the scene where they're introducing their characters, like, you know, a session zero kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the movie is trying to say, again, like, look at these dweebs who are escaping their problems. Instead, I'm just like, dope. That's some good characters right there. Yeah. Do I love the names? No. No, the names are incredibly 80s D&D. Yeah, Freilich, Glacia, and Pampardu. Pam Pardu. Yeah. So it's just it's it's weird to have a moral panic movie where the topic of the moral panic, like the impetus for it, is so mm-hmm. banal at this point. Mm-hmm. It'd be like if somebody made a moral panic movie about like chicken parmesan. <laughs> <laughs> and you're watching this like, I don't know, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Um so Okay, the other is that, like, our first introduction to any of these characters is JJ, who is dressed like he's about to storm the trenches at Verdun. Yeah. And and no one says anything. No. Hat guy gets away with a lot of bullshit in this I one. Do, so, I had a working theory mm-hmm. that hat guy 
uh, lacked the top of his skull. Oh. And so he had to wear hats to protect yeah. his exposed brain. Yeah. But then later in the movie, he just grows a skull. And so he like stops wearing hats and then starts wearing hats again and then stops wearing hats. Yeah. It, and it's never commented on. It's never explained why JJ wears so many different hats, including on move-in day wearing what seems to be a 20-gallon hat. Yeah. Hey, you know, you got to stand out on your first day of college. I, but it's not his yes. first day. He's a sophomore. What is he doing? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, and like, I just, the whole movie is so buck wild and I hate all his friends. Yeah. Um, Kate's probably the best of them, but at one point Daniel is bemoaning the fact that he can't get close with anyone because everyone thinks he's too good at making out. Yeah, he says that he has the reputation as a real makeout champion or something mm-hmm. like that. Which is obviously a lie he tells himself so he can sleep at night. Yeah. Um Yeah. He sounds it's... like a like aging rock star because he says a bunch of stuff where he's like I just go from woman to woman and I'm so lonely. And JJ is like, yeah, it sounds really fucking tough. It's like, dude, you're 22 years old. It's so weird. And then there's like an unearned montage where like, I, I don't know what you thought of the montage music, but it seemed so divorced from what the montage was. Of the romance? Is that what you're talking about? It was like the romance and also them playing and something else, but it was just this like weird music choice. Yeah, well, this is why the tonal shift is so crazy because playing the game was part of this montage of like Tom Hanks and Kate like getting together. Mm-hmm. And then they just seem like they're having a great time at college playing lots of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And then he loses his shit. <laughs> He does. <laughs> and then I I do love at one point JJ is talking to his bird and is like, man, I'm so lonely. I'm gonna go kill myself in the caves. And he's like kind of can't figure out why he's so lonely. Maybe it's all the fucking hats, JJ. <laughs> you consider that? Maybe if you wore a ball cap. Have a you tried ball it? Cap. Yeah, people probably don't want to talk to you if they think you're about to be shipped off to the fucking Somme, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just love... Because you're going along. You're having a okay time with this movie. Mm-hmm. And then Tom Hanks loses it. <laughs> he loses it. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, I can't think of a movie that has more whiplash in it. <laughs> it's so wild. I mean, like, we get... Okay. They're in the caves. They get scared by a skeleton. Yeah. And uh, Oh, Kate they're is... LARPing hard, by They're the LARPing way. so hard. They get scared by a skeleton. Kate says, is the skeleton evil? JJ from a corner of the cave is like, oh, no, no. Um, and then somebody says, is it helpful? And he's like, well, you'll find out. And then Tom goes, can you fuck it? And then <laughs> uh, and he's like, hey, check for holes. And then they're like, oh, we found some herb. We have to follow the herb, which like. What kind of herb are we talking? Yeah, welcome to college, folks. Uh, mm-hmm. Even when LARPing, you got to follow the marijuana. Yeah. And then Tom sees a sea minotaur and stabs it and screams. Yeah. And that's the that's the rest of the movie is Tom's rapid descent into madness. Yeah. Stabs a dude. Stabs a guy. Stabs a In New York City. (laughs) And then uh, gives gives the Twin Towers the stink eye, which is not aged terribly well. No. And then tries to leap off of them. Yeah. Oi. <laughs> <sighs> it's 
kind of charming in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I would not recommend watching this one, even though it is available on every free streaming platform you can think of. Pretty much. Uh, This one was a paycheck. This was Tom Hanks with his 17 Mm -hmm. kids needing to bring home some bacon. Yes. I I wonder, like, do you think... um that he did a good job acting in yes it. yes it's yes, really yes. here's the crazy thing now he's working with some bullshit material mm-hmm. uh like he's talking to kate in their dorm at one point their shared dorm mm-hmm. uh because that's a thing and uh he gets up and delivers a monologue about his brother who right yeah dipped dipped out of the family and he is putting in the work is the script writing awful? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's real bad. But what's weird to me about his performance in this movie, and not knocking the other people, it is nuts to see. It's like if Meryl Streep did a moral panic movie about marijuana <laughs> as a 26-year-old. Because there's still something there where you're like, this dude's got it. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to go places. See, I think I was so caught up in how bad the writing is and how absurd the movie is that at one point I was like, this is the same guy who was Captain Phillips? Yeah. I can kind of see the through line. I think he... Because remember that this is like... We don't see Captain Phillips. The grizzling of Tom Hanks takes a long time. Mm Mm-hmm. We yes, go through a lot of doofy comedies. Yeah, I mean, in the in the time that it takes for Tom to, you know, in that time span, I mean, the towers fell. Yeah, yeah. So that should give me an idea. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I think the performance is pretty solid. The writing, I think if they wrote the book in a day, I think the script took about an hour. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, I think they just did a a heroic amount of cocaine. Oh, so much <laughs> blow. And I love the idea that they're like doing gigantic lines of blow and being like, we got to be careful about this D&D stuff. Yeah, you got to stay away from this D&D. Anyway, can you hand me the thermos we have full of cocaine? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Luke... Uh, could you could you do me a quick favor? Yeah. Could you grab a 2D12 and roll for initiative? Because it's time to come with me to the conspiracy corner. Oh man. I have D12 on the on the uh bookcase over there. But mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> the joke isn't worth me getting up to go grab 2D12. Probably not. So yeah. No, let's go to the conspiracy corner. Mm-hmm. which uh you're probably wondering uh does sam actually know D? he said roll t- a 2d12 for initiative i do but for whatever reason that's what they fucking used in this movie yeah they used 2d12 i don't know why yeah i don't know luke this movie is the fucking conspiracy corner rosetta stone i wondered the whole time i'm watching this i'm like man this movie kind of sucks but but I bet Sam is having a wild ride oh, with it. Oh my god. Yeah. This this had everything for me, including an explanation of how Tom Hanks got to a point where he could not fuck human women. Oh. Because if you remember, he has a vision, and the person says, gotta be celibate. And I'm imagining that celibacy does not cover fish. Yeah, I mean, if... if... <laughs> If you're a monk Mm -hmm. in the 1400s Mm -hmm. and you walk in on another monk fucking a fish, Uh your your first response is not, wow, you're breaking your vow of celibacy right now. No. It's, whoa, you're fucking a fish right now. Yeah. Can I get a turn? (laughs) Can I get in on this? Yeah. Can I have your sloppy seconds? (laughs) Pass the sturgeon. <laughs> <laughs> That's the episode. That's the episode title, my guy. Pass the sturgeon. Pass the sturgeon is very uh-huh. good. Yeah. So um, yeah. So like that. That alone, honestly, made this worth it. 
but like we get more because Luke Ajar's here. Oh. Ajar is okay. here. Here, the, yeah. The sea minotaur? Yeah. Yeah, that's I if it's not Atar, it's one of his his demon minions because um I'll just show you right here. Doesn't that kind of look like it? That does the the actual the Atar emblem that you discovered on the furnace mm -hmm. and printed the, out and printed out in the burbs mm -hmm. uh does look a disturbing amount like that sea minotaur. It looks a lot like the sea minotaur. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> I forgot the 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 thing about the conspiracy corner mm -hmm. is that it's a vast web of conspiracies. But the problem, my dude, is that they make a lot of sense. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> if you open your third eye wide enough, it starts yeah. making a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. So, uh, it, you, you got the sea minotaur, who's obviously either Atar or a uh, 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 some sort of. Uh, uh, demon like, prince demon uh, demon underling of atar yeah and and we see this is where the battle first began can i posit a theory uh-huh what if it's not atar but atar's cousin greg i think you've yes and what tom hanks has done is murder greg he murdered greg and see, that's what summoned Atar to this plane. Now, as we all know, Pequod Caverns, where they do the heavy LARPing, is a, a, a liminal space. You know, yeah. it's a thin barrier to the hell dimension that Atar comes from. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's why Greg was there. He was on his way to Aldi. Yeah, exactly. Because everyone knows <laughs> demons love Aldi. Demons love Aldi. Yeah. Um, and so Greg was on his way there and Tom Hanks, a healer, blessed by God, mm -hmm. <laughs> does the only natural thing and stabs Greg, Atar's <laughs> cousin. And this, this is what launches the war. This yeah. is what summons Atar to our realm and puts a fucking target squarely on Tom Hanks. Yeah. Um, and so we do see him kind of in like a, a fugue state wandering around new york um and and i think this is maybe atar's attempt to try to deal with the problem because that's what atar does you know he yeah. manipulates people and so he's he's gotten tom hanks he gets him to stab a guy uh so that maybe he'll get arrested and then that doesn't work so he's like i'll make him jump off the twin towers which uh, as a side note his friends are like huh Ta uh, Robbie kept talking about the two towers. What are the two towers? Hmm. Hmm. And like while they're staring at the twin towers. Yeah. Um. Not yeah. a not a real fucking Sunday crossword puzzle there. Yeah, and they're kind of getting F's. That's the part you don't know about. Uh huh. They don't go into the fact that their GPAs are like negative numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. I, you know what? I probably should have explained what the conspiracy corner is for people oh. who who are new to the show. Uh, the conspiracy corner obviously is where um, I have I, I have, without a doubt, proven that Tom Hanks is uh, every character he has ever played, and yeah. also himself. This time he is uh, Robbie Wheeling. Yeah. Um, and uh, he has been engaged uh, for decades, um, in uh, a grand battle. Uh, yeah. with the demon prince atar um tom of course is uh, blessed by god um and is the father of the christ child it's a it's a whole thing um but no so so atar puts him under his thrall makes him stab a guy doesn't work so atar directs tom to what will later be one of atar's tar targets the twin towers yeah and tries to uh get tom hanks to jump off the top yeah. Now, if you'll remember, in Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, yes, Tom Hanks, once again, as Thomas Shell, is in the World Trade Center on 9-11, that fateful yeah. day. Yeah. And ATAR directed the hijackers to fly the plane directly <laughs> into the World Trade Center. <laughs> and 
in in an effort not to terrorize the nation, but to kill Tom Hanks. Yeah. And so we see Atar like kind of comes back to these old tricks, you know? He's yeah. like, I'll kill him at the Twin Towers by making him jump off, and it doesn't work. And he's like, okay, I tried a lot of stuff over the past 19 years. I'm I'm gonna lure him into a false sense of security. Yeah. And I'm gonna crash a plane into his uh, place of business. Yeah, I'm gonna wait till he gets a day job. Mm-hmm. Which uh, just so happens to be the same Twin Towers that I tried to make him throw himself off of. Yeah. Yeah. God, this is the conspiracy corner, man. It's this... just it it is the truth. Mm-hmm. Like you start picking at things, and all of a sudden. The, the picture becomes distressingly clear. Oh, yeah. Because the other is that, like, this is this is a Tom who is relatively untrained. He is yet to join Israel's Mossad. Yeah. Um, and so his mind is... <laughs> I just, like, it's a good point. If you if you join us <laughs> in the Dwayne or the Keanu seasons, <laughs> there's a lot of continuity <laughs> homework you're going to need to do to catch up on the conspiracy There's a corner. lot. You got you got some fucking homework to do. Yeah. It's um, worth it. God yeah. damn, is it worth it? Go listen to the Tom Hanks season, our our only good season. But his mind has not been strengthened yeah. against Atar's tricks. Yeah, um, that didn't happen really until the Da Vinci Code. Correct. I think it's when shit really got, you know, he 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 did a training montage basically mm-hmm. in those three yeah. movies. And so that's how he was able to fall under Atar's thrall. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Um, I also think, you know, Robbie, uh, his brother, Paul dipped off and was never seen again. And I, I think Paul was corrupted by Atar as well. Hmm. Yeah. Um, cause you know, Atar, you know, I think it was just happenstance Yeah. that it happened to be Robbie slash Tom Hanks's brother, Paul. Yeah. Um, but you know, once that connection was there yeah yeah damn dude yeah Mm -hmm. it feels so good to be back in the conspiracy corner i'm glad it feels good to you because it (laughs) because it it feels like i've been sober for quite some time (laughs) and i saw a particularly good pile of cocaine and i was like well hold on now what if I rolled in this like it were snow? What if I made some <laughs> snow angels in this big old pile of blow? Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's the conspiracy core. Excellent. I was hoping you'd have some nuggets oh, for yeah. me in this one, and boy, oh, howdy, yeah. did you deliver! Oh, should also say, folks, the thing about fish fucking Tom Hanks can't fuck a human woman. He's a scaly, He's a which scaly. is like a furry, but for fish. Yeah, which, again, became obvious over Mm -hmm. the course of watching his entire oeuvre. Started as a conspiracy with a little bit of proof and then quickly became (laughs) kind of a mountain of evidence. It's just just factual. (laughs) Okay, so I want to talk about one thing really quick. Yeah, sure. We We can just come down on this hard. Okay. Vow of celibacy, fish, splash? Mm-hmm. Does that count? Because they bone a lot. They, they do fuck a lot, but she's a mermaid, so she's a fish woman hybrid. Okay. And I don't believe we ever see them fuck, correct? Yeah, that's true. So he might get her in fish form. Yeah, that's a good point. And I then think go to, have to go to town on her cloaca i guess so yeah the you would have to have a cloaca yeah the specifics of unless unless do mermaids just always have a cloaca even if they're in human form yeah, do yeah. they just have one multi-purpose hole sadly i'm following um <laughs> i think the answer is yes yeah so i Which, think that yeah. firmly demonstrates that yeah it, that's fair game if it's a cloaca you're okay you're okay yeah yeah <laughs> this podcast <laughs> yeah if it's a clo- cloaca you're okay ka. you're okay ka. yeah i hope tom listens to this someday uh, yeah 
Tom, hit us up, man. We're yeah. here. We've been here since 2020. We have. Waiting for that call. You've done other podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you son of a bitch. We promise we will only ask four to 20 questions <laughs> about your vow of celibacy and desire to fuck fish. Yeah, and also the demon prince, Atar. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what was it like betting the Christ child? Yeah. That's right. He's not the father of the Christ child. He fucked, he had a, a romance with the Christ child. He obviously didn't fuck her because she's a human woman, but they had yeah. a romance. They did um, have a fling. Yeah. And and he's the protector of the Christ child. Something like that. I don't Something know. Something like that. I, the yeah. Da Vinci Code movies were a blur. They were indeed. Yeah. Um, and a conspiracy corner bonanza. Oh, so. God. <laughs> to, to go back to those heady days. <laughs> Uh, we're pretty long, but I, I just uh-huh. want to take a quick pulse check here. Mm-hmm. How did it feel being back in the Tom, the it Tom space? F- fucking good. I did discover something though. Mm-hmm. I think we may have missed a Tom movie, a recent one that came out this year. Oh, cause I was looking at IMDB for whatever reason. Um, and he was in a movie this year called freaky tales. Really? And it's. It's unclear to me how much he's in it, but he on the IMDb page, he's high up in the cast list. He might be listed first. Well, I think so, we all know what that means. So we we might have to check out Freaky Tales for next week. I think so. And this is out? Yeah. I'm, well, mm, unclear. Because um, okay. I think it was like a Sundance flick. Yeah. So. God damn it. God damn it. If nope. it's available. Nope. Nope. Oh. Sorry. Accidentally okay. accidentally clicked a, a YouTube push notification while I was trying to <laughs> go to a different tab. <laughs> you can catch up on your haircutting ASMR later, mm-hmm. Sam. Yeah, freaky tales. It is not available for streaming, so uh and I don't even know if it's in theaters. Hmm. Is it out? Yeah, I'll say this. I'll, mm-hmm. do so, I'll do some exploration. Yeah, because it again, it, it may have just been like at Sundance, and so it may not have gotten a wider release. I will do some delicate spelunking. I'll okay. do some LARPing in the caves and see if I can't acquire this flick. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Just a a fun little amuse-bouche for you? Yeah. It has Pedro Pascal in it. Oh, the internet's daddy, Pedro Mm -hmm. Pascal. So we might be getting to watch a movie with the internet's daddy and America's dad. America's dad. Hell yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. I really hope. I'm going to work pretty hard to source this thing. Yeah, or if it's not out yet, you know, we can we can get to it down the line. Yeah, true. Yeah, another whether we dip back into Tom this time mm-hmm. or maybe just uh, at some point in the near future. Uh, I look forward to it. It was a breath of fresh air being back in the Tom it, Hanks space. It felt good. It felt like being in uh, like wrapped in a warm blanket. Yeah, because I think the last time we saw Tom was Asteroid City. Which uh, felt like being wrapped in poison. Yeah, wrapped in a blanket made of barbed wire. Mm-hmm. Um, so seeing this, oh, oh, it was so good. Yeah, yeah. this was a good time. Nice. Well, we're definitely long. Do you want to wrap us up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, folks, thanks for listening to another episode of Hanks Pinks. You can find us on Facebook at Hanks Pinks Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Hanks Pinks Pod. You can send us an email at Hanks Pinks Pod at gmail.com. We're also on Blue Sky, something like Hanks Pinksy. Uh, we got a Patreon, patreon.com slash Hanks Pinksy. You can find a lot of cool stuff over there. We're doing neat things. Ken and I played Oregon Trail version five. Uh, you can watch, uh, check us enough money. You can be one of Hanks' heroes like Tuck and Daniel. Fellas, I'll LARP with you in a cave. Nice. Who's, do you have a final quote? I do. It is. Can you tell me more about the dragon? And that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, folks, uh, thanks for listening to another episode of Hanksy Panksy. We'll be back next week with either Freaky Tales or some Keanu Reeves movie. <laughs>